so my name is James Crockett I'm going to do my testimony about how I came to Jesus Christ and how he rescued me out of the new age I'm 30 years old and I'm from England so I were about 20 year old and the type of person that I was at the time I was into heavy metal rock music I used to listen to Disturbed Metallica Megadeth Nightwish Slipknot Lamb of God and a load of other junk I were also bodybuilding with my friends who I've known since being a child we grown up together in school, stuff like that. So we all grew up together. We used to go out clubbing together and partying and on weekends, you know, chatting up women. And eventually we started taking drugs. Oh, started taking We were taking pills, ecstasy tablets, cocaine, MDMA, and obviously I was taking bubble as well, which is a like a knockoff version of cocaine. So I was taking those drugs, partying, going clubbing, while bodybuilding. And I were into heavy metal. That's the type of person I were. I were angry. And I were angry as well. And I used to be in the mirror. Lifting weights. Staring at myself in the mirror. Getting all revved up and angry. While all the veins were popping out of my arms. And my forehead and my neck. Like that. So me and my friends would keep going out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, partying. We got to taking drugs. We were sleeping with women a while we were out and just being stupid. We used to climb on buildings and, you know, whatever. Just all the ridiculous foolishness that you see going on. We were idiots. We were complete idiots. And it was fun, don't get me wrong. But it's not good, is it? Not even when you're in your 20s and you're supposed to be a man. And that's all that you live for, basically. That's all I lived for. That's all I did. So anyway, because I was so angry, and part of me was about self-help, I guess, building myself up not spiritually or mentally but physically because it was based on pride and how people perceived me women because I got into the whole pickup artist thing as well learning about body language and how women work and all that lot and that's all it were about for me and the cocaine helped because when I took the cocaine I didn't have confidence to go up to anybody but when I had that cocaine I could just go up to somebody and say something and I could end up sleeping with him so anyway so I was really angry so I got into this meditation thing thinking to myself, maybe it'll balance me out. I can relax, I, I can do weights and rev up and like proper pump it and then meditate and it'll calm me down. Because I were having fights with my mum and dad, I were punching doors off hinges because of the cocaine, I've been taking loads of cocaine and that were making me angry. And also, heavy metals, angry. And so's bodybuilding when you're 
not taking captive every thought and you're just being reckless and staring in a mirror proper pumping like some angry fool so I was arguing with my parents I had no respect for them I lived with them I didn't um, keep my room tidy my room were a complete mess junk all over the floor I just it were a mess complete mess you couldn't see the floor basically you couldn't see the floor in my bedroom because it was full of trash nothing was organized nothing was organized doors were hanging off drawers I were a mess so anyway that's that part so moving on to the meditation that I started doing to try and get myself relaxed because I was having fights and arguing at home and all that lot and thinking I was, I was thinking violent thoughts as well in my mind I've never really fought I've never been a fighter but in my mind around that time I used to almost fantasize about fighting people and just kicking the crap out of people right so but at the time I didn't really see it as a big concern but yeah I was definitely getting really angry and I knew that once I had this fight with my parents this time I knew that right now I've got to just relax and sort this out so anyway I did try and start to try and quit the cocaine and it was difficult I couldn't quit the cocaine I needed Jesus to help me quit the cocaine and he helped me quit so I was taking pills ecstasy MDMA bubble oh alcohol obviously I was getting wasted because while we were out we used to drink obviously and I've always been a lightweight so I'd get drunk and that'd be it and so then I'd jump in a taxi and just try and go home and my mates would be like they'd want to take something off me to try and keep me out so that I won't go on because I kept trying to do a runner I was first one to, <laughs> I was first one to go on I was like I'm just going to the toilet guys <laughs> and then I'd just go and get a taxi I'd jump in a taxi and then I'd be out of there so they used to take things off me try and take something from me so that I'd stay out so I were a lightweight so I needed those drugs I needed those drugs to try and get me to so that I'd be able to stay out all night I started having sex with girls outside clubs just take a girl out round back, have sex with her, whatever, I was bad, I was, I was bad, that's what I was like, so then I started meditating, I got into breathing meditation to relax myself, and then as I'm looking online on YouTube, I start learning about transcendental meditation, um, then I got into opening my chakras but let me just go down this list because there's so much stuff that I did that it's hard to know where it all fits together so that what I've just said is true but all this stuff here I wasn't serving the one true God but when I started wanting to know things about whoever God was all these things were popping up and I was mixing, I was bringing all this stuff together and trying to make this one big belief system. So I believed in all of this at the same time. Even though I don't know how, because I don't know, but I made it all fit together somehow in my own head just like it says in scripture it says in scripture that the time will come 
when people will gather around them a large number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear well that's what I were doing right so if you're into meditation you'll know about this if you're into the new age sorry this new age stuff that's going on that Satan's making so popular right now then you'll know about this and you can get in touch with me and message me and we can talk about it Jesus Christ is the only way this stuff is garbage indigo crystal or star children I used to think that I were an indigo child so as soon as I learned about meditation and got into meditation online and learning about meditation um, YouTube suggested to me all these other things and I read about all of them because I started to have questions I wanted to know as I were going out partying I was thinking to myself damn it this night is ending now I started thinking to myself the drugs are wearing off I'm gonna to have to go back to work work for a full week then I can do this all over again and then I'm gonna to have to go back to work and do this all over again work and then I can come back here to this club and take all these drugs again just to feel this awesome feeling like so that and I started thinking about eternity I started thinking about something everlasting like what is everlasting nothing's everlasting okay so this stuff really did prick my ears when I started seeing on the side of these meditation videos you're an indigo child you're a star child you are if infinity you are God these things online were saying that you are uh, your higher self you are part of a collective consciousness basically saying that I were God and then I started having questions about like am I God who is God is there a God none of it were about Jesus it were all just about just do the questions first before Jesus come along so I got into indigo and crystal crystal children star children I thought that I was a star child like an indigo child which is from so I believed I were a Pleiadian so some of you won't understand what any of this is but if you go online and I advise that you don't because it's a load of crap but you'll find all these symptoms like okay if you're an indigo child you have these symptoms you love the color purple purple's awesome you love it check you like this you dislike this you like this you like this you dislike this check 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 right you're an indigo child awesome okay so that's what it's like when you're reading these things online just like ascension symptoms do this thing that's saying you have ascension symptoms headaches pain in your lower back you hear music when you wake up in the morning playing in your head or something you're ascending you're a fourth dimensional being and you're ascending to the fifth dimension you're having a spiritual awakening and, and, and everybody in this world is asleep but you are waking up you're having a spiritual awakening and uh, you were sent here from you're an alien you're an indigo child from the Pleiades or you're an Arcturian or, or some other type of alien that and we've all been sent to earth to live on earth and walk out and, and live our life on earth with this purpose to meet our um, twin flame, our soulmate, and then once we find each other, we'll fly away back to Mars and live happily ever after, or some garbage like that. It's absolutely garbage. I can't remember all of it, but it's just ridiculous. 
But anyway, so we're into all that. Just don't even bother looking it up. Just take my word for it. It's a load of crap, right? So we're into that. Um, yeah, I thought that I was ascending to the fifth dimension. Um, I believed I was a light worker as well. Like I could, because I got into chi energy as well. So like I, that I could move objects with my mind and I could heal people if I laid my hands on them. I was a light worker. I could work with light and heal people. That I were ascending to the fifth dimension. And that everything is on a vibration. Everything is on a vibration. It's physical because it's dense, negative vibration in this realm. If we raise our vibrations and get super happy, we will lose our physicality. Because everything is made out of sound. All matter is sound and therefore it vibrates if you raise your vibration, it stops being physical, like ice turns into water when it melts. That teaching's like that. So I was trying to raise my vibration and start to become super happy so that I could turn into a spirit being and ascend to the fifth dimension, right? So I was incorporating all these beliefs. Um, I started praying to my star family, aliens, which are apparently surrounding Earth in many spaceships, watching us, like, because Earth is this um, test ground. I'll pray to spirit guides, eventually. This is over time, the more I'm doing these things. And I'm meditating throughout this. I was meditating throughout learning about these things. Um, I started praying to spirit guides. I started praying to angels um, and my star family. I got into totem animals. I got into nature worship, going out, meditating in the fields, taking off my shoes and socks, barefoot walking, Getting all, trying to suck white light energy out of Mother Earth, Mother Gaia. Um, talking to plants, going up to daffodils and speaking to them like they understood English. Hugging trees, staring at the sun to open my third eye chakra, looking at the moon. Just like it says in Deuteronomy in, in the Bible. Do not bow down to the sun, the moon, or the stars, or any of these things. For the Lord God has no form. You saw no form in him. He has no form. Jesus Christ said, God is spirit, and he wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. But yep, I bow down to the stars, I bow down to the moon, I bow down to the sun, I bow down to the trees and the rocks and everything, worshipping the elements. I used to go out and meditate in fields and control the wind. <laughs> I used to control the wind and, I, and it's true. It's true. It's madness. I can't believe it. I can't believe how mad it is. That I'm actually telling this testimony to you. And some of you are going to look at this when you see it. And you're going to think that I'm crazy. And I don't care. I really don't care. Because you, you just don't know. Just like I didn't know. I didn't know any of this. But now I know. Now I know who the one true God is, and it's Jesus Christ, and his Father, and the Holy Ghost, and they are one. They are one. But I didn't know at the time. And the strange thing about it is, or what's worse about it, is that demons are all over, they're everywhere, and they... They're the ones who can do this. They're the ones who can work in your mind and read your thoughts. Like, 
take for example this so i used to have really vivid vivid dreams when i really got deep into the the meditating i started trying to make my spirit come out of my body fly out of my body astral projection fly into the spirit realm and talk to other spirits and meet other people who were doing it apparently right and the demons are in that realm in the second heaven and they can make themselves look like whatever they want and they come to you and talk to you they used to come to me um let's say dressed up but they're disguised technically they are dressed up but in their realm it looks real it looks totally real you don't know it looks well real because they're in a higher realm than we are really the first and the second and the third heaven god's in the third heaven they're in the second we're in the first so it's like that isn't it so i flew out of my body and what have you and, and they're there but in these vivid dreams they'd come as um aztecs or egyptians and all this lot and teach you in dreams that whatever they want you to believe yeah you're a you're an indigo child or you're a, if they want to give you past life um regression memories then they'll just take information that they have about a samurai warrior or something because they've been with the samurai warrior thousands of years ago because they've been around all that time they'll come and teach it to you in a dream so that you have that memory of a samurai warrior and then you wake up and you're like oh i remember finally i remember yeah i were a samurai warrior our queen elizabeth I remember our Henry VIII, man. I used to hate being Henry VIII. <laughs> so that's what they do. They put those thoughts into your head. And you don't know any different. You just don't know any different. So they can do that. So... I was seeing synchronicities, numbers seven 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 one 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 whatever all that junk um are having vivid dreams meditating outside yeah hugging trees talking to plants opening all my chakras kundalini awakening or into the macabre third eye med meditation all that so let's go to the third eye meditation because that's where everything, well, everything were bad anyway. But that's where things got crazy. So the time came when I decided to truly commit myself to this path of believing this. Even though I didn't actually have a one set doctrine, there were no doctrine, there were no guidelines, there were nothing. You can do whatever you want in the New Age movement. You can sin, you can, you can take drugs. I was looking into taking DMT and ayahuasca, going out and some Aboriginal tribe somewhere and licking a toad, just so that I could have a mad trip. Do you know what I mean? Because thinking that that where I'd be going to that dimension is heaven. But it's not heaven. It's the demonic realm. It looks nice and seems nice and they look beautiful, but they are fallen angels. So they're going to look beautiful and you're not going to know any different. You're just like an ant or like a... It's just like if a fish had a brain to think with intelligence and I decided no a piece of plankton and I decided 
to pull plankton out and then talk uh, talk to it and it hearing my voice and make it its mind melt right so basically that's what it's like and that's not even a a good angel or a god that's a fallen angel that can disguise itself and still look beautiful so when people have these mad trips when they go around licking toads and stuff and however you take ayahuasca and stuff yeah that's what it is satan's deceiving people to have people believe all this stuff so that they carry on doing it and getting deeper and deeper into it and the deeper they get into it the more the demons have a grip on these people and they won't let them go and the harder and harder it becomes to come out of it and people commit their lives to it like these monks who meditate and they meditate and they just don't stop meditating and then they're basically spending 24 hours a day in the spirit realm in meditation just the physical bodies here but them in their spirit they are in the spirit realm 24 hours a day in the demon realm which looks nice you know how dangerous that is that is dangerous that's not good so but they don't know they don't know So I started opening up all my chakras and I think that I did open up my third eye chakra and my crown chakra. I started at the base, um, whatever, you go up, I think there's one here and all, but then you get to your heart chakra, you get to your throat chakra when you start singing all the time and all these symptoms, ascension symptoms, you're ascending to the, you're, you're going to become a fifth dimensional being soon and float away. Anyway, and then eventually you get to your third eye chakra and you're supposed to become psychic. And it's true, you do. Because I did. I was able to read people's minds. Not completely. Not like I could look at somebody and knew that they were saying, uh, knew what they were thinking completely, word for word. But I were doing some weird stuff. Like I could just look at somebody and be like, Oi, you, turn around. And they'd turn around and look at me right in eyes. They'd just be walking down the street and I'd just be like, <clears throat> and they'd just be like, eh? Yeah, because I could make them look at me. It's not a great superpower, is it? But I used to walk past people and like tap them on their head with my mind. I'd be like, tap, tap, or on the shoulder or something, like tap, and they'd like turn around. Like somebody were there. Oh, I've moved stuff from my mind, trying to just staring at candles and trying to put candles out and make candles flicker or have something on a table and I'll be there all day just like with my chi energy, like trying to... And I started doing this stuff as well. I forgot all about this. Energy balls. Trying to like do this thing where I used to do that and imagine like energy and create a ball like I was the last airbender or something <sighs> but it works though that is the crazy thing like it is real it's not false it's not fake it is real and the more you practice being the last airbender you'll be able to bend air but guess what's in the air demons are in the air when the last airbenders bend in air that guy who lives down the street full of beads and baggy pants with sandals with dreadlocks and a big beard i'm stereotyping yeah but i can guarantee that that guy thinks he's a last airbender well anyway when he's bending air the demons are in the air the demons are here they're everywhere so that person's trying to do that the demons are there making that person feel that feeling on the palms of their hands when they're trying to create a chi ball and they want to throw the chi ball at somebody and knock someone over and that person gets knocked over by somebody's chi ball 
The thing that knocked them over was not that person's chi energy. It was the demon read that person's mind, throw a chi ball, or throw a chi ball. The demon told them to throw the chi ball. They threw the chi ball. The demon goes and pushes somebody over. That person then thinks that they're the last airbender, and then they continue to practice and get deeper and deeper and deeper into it until they're in such a dangerous place that they're not going to be able to get out of it because they've just basically done too much magic because that's what it is it's magic black magic and there's white magic and this stuff that satan's got out there is white magic well and there's black magic in the shops as well actually but magic fights magic, just like Harry Potter. White magic versus black magic. So, so I committed myself to this. And I started, I did my room up. I tidied my room up. I became a vegetarian. Um, and I started basically just meditating a whole lot um i painted my bedroom bright yellow and i had green and white silk drapes like some opium den i had macabre dream catchers i had dream catchers i had buddha statues everywhere i had scented candles everywhere bean bags cushions all around the skirting board of the room i had big idol statues with beads all over them and i had crystals all over my room and josh sticks burning and a bright yellow and red parrot in a gold cage that I named Dude. Yep. I used to listen to angel music and um, online meditation, guided meditation stuff and turn all lights out and turn all candles on and do OM meditation like OM and imagine focus on my third eye chakra yeah so i were doing this because i was trying to become psychic and read people's minds and like i said um my room was like complete just a big opium den it looked like an opium den but a lot more brighter And I were into all that kind of stuff. And um, so where do we go from here? I was still going out with my friends. So I was still going out with my friends and taking drugs. I'd stopped going to the gym though. I really got into this meditation thing. thinking that our God started painting myself blue, Egyptian blue, that bright blue sky colour, putting it on my face, wearing a white robe with like a belt and a hat, like, like an headband with a white feather and uh, I used to have a necklace, a beaded necklace with a blue ankh and ankh, eternal life. Ankh, whatever you call it. And meditated and used to stare at this idol statue that I had in my room, amongst many other statues, and pray to spirits. So anyway. Yeah, and uh, I'd still be going out with my friends and meditating in clubs. Like I'd be in a club, out to party, and I'd be in a, a club trying to meditate. 
and cancel out everything to just be at peace. But really I was just showing off. Because if I really wanted to be at peace, I wouldn't have even been in the club. It was ridiculous. It was stupid. I was just showing off. And then, yeah, like I've said, I used to go out and stare at the sun and just look at the sun. Smoke a ton of weed and just stare at the sun to keep trying to open up that third eye chakra and I got into this decalcification of the pineal gland where you decalcify yourself and take these tablets and all that um, learning that the government had put um, fluoride in all of our toothpaste and water and all this stuff and I needed to decalcify my pineal gland to become psychic so somewhere along the lines I opened up my third eye chakra and then like all hell broke loose basically so I'm just wondering where to go from now on because this is getting to the good part <sighs> Right, so, still going out with my mates, I'd changed my style, my style had changed completely, I was wearing, I would dress like Russell Brand or something, or Richard Branson, my mates used to call me Richard Branson, because <laughs> I had white, this white cotton shirt that I always used to wear and these beaded necklaces and my hair and whatever they used to call me Richard Branson but I was like hippie I'd gone into like hippie style um but I thought that I were like a guru or something that's really what I thought oh yeah I started having dreams and they started to come true so I'd dream about something and it would actually happen in real life no joke I'd dream about something and then find myself in that exact situation throughout my day. Like, whoa, this happened, this. I dreamt this last night. I mean, you know, I dreamt this last night. Like, and um, yeah, like I said, I could kind of read people's thoughts and tap on their mind and make them look at me and that and also somebody would be like about to ring me and i'd be like they're going to ring me right now and then phone would ring and i'd know it were them i'd know where they were and what they were doing and all this stuff it, it, things started getting a bit strange but that were good because that's what i wanted i wanted all that now out partying still meditating getting deep into it i started to try and leave my body and make my spirit fly out of my body and I got to do it I managed to do it like I'd be in bed sometimes lying there and then all of a sudden well not all of a sudden I used to try to will myself out of my body to will my spirit to leave my body and the way that you do it is where your body's really tired and your body wants to go to sleep and you try your best to stay awake you're just basically exhausting yourself anyway and then it's just the demons bring about what they want they bring it about they know that that's what you want to do they're the ones telling you to want to do it and keep pursuing this whole thing and they then help you to leave your body after a certain time when they're ready for it when they see that you've committed enough and you're not going to turn back and give up so i go to sleep with crystals under my pillow and all this stuff and try and as my body's knackered try and keep myself awake <clears throat> and then one time it happened I just like slid out of my body 
I was just lying in bed. Just lying there on my bed. And uh, my spirit slid out of my body. Just I was just lying there. It was like... It was like having a, a foot in a sock. It was like the sock was my physical body and the foot was my spirit. I'm on the bed. That's my physical body. This is my spirit. I'm on my bed and I just slid out of my body. And I felt myself just slide out of my body like a foot sliding out of a sock. But I'm at the bottom of the bed where my physical feet are. Staring at the roof. But when I'm in my physical body, where my physical head is, I'm directly in line with the light bulb. So I knew that I'd slid out of my body and slid down. And after that, I don't know what happened, right? So, so things like this started happening. And like, I'd be going to work... And I'd come home from work and my dad would be driving me home in the car. And say there's a car on the motorway over there or over there. It would be over there and then in a second like that it would be right in front of us. In real life, like time had lapsed. Basically, my dad, I was going places throughout the day in my spirit like that. And then returning to my body again and saying, whoa, what was that? Like, like, say, for example, now. Imagine, imagine this. Imagine right now you get up. And go into the kitchen or wherever you are you get up and you go somewhere you remember the journey and you remember arriving there you go from where you are now up to the toilet or you go from where you are now to the fridge there's a journey in between but just imagine if now all of a sudden you're at the fridge, looking into the fridge. That's what it was like throughout my day. Driving on the motorway, there's a car in front of me, and in a second it's right in front of me, like bang. We're still driving, but I don't remember it. I don't remember how. I don't remember seeing it or seeing us speed up to get there, or it it just basically came. Bzzz, right in front of me things were like there'd be a person right over there and then zoop, they'd be right in front of me weird stuff like that started happening and um so so that started happening i started coming out of my body things in the physical realm were moving around like that it were weird I'm having really weird dreams and I was meeting people in my dreams, the same people over and over again, teaching me things, teaching me, talking to me and that. And then I started to feel spirits all around me. I could feel that there was something in the room. And it, uh, like a, I thought it was a ghost, but it was actually a demon. And I'd be... I'd be like, I know you're here. I can feel you here. It's okay. You can stay. And I'd invite them in, basically inviting them in. Didn't know who they were. Didn't know what they were. Thought I knew. Or you can stay. It's fine. And I'd walk from room to room and follow them. I couldn't see them, but I knew where they were going. I knew that there was a spirit in this room here. Yeah, it's here. Oh, it's gone into this room now. No, it's not in that room over there. I can't feel it in that room. Oh, it's gone down to the kitchen or something. I could feel the energy from one room to another. And I knew where it was. I knew that there'd be... There were one thing in particular and I knew where it was sat at one point. Like, 
you're sat on that chair. And I remember staring at the chair and talking to the chair like I were talking to this spirit on the chair. So then me and my friends would be going out around uh, Manchester and that still. Still clubbing, blah, 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 taking drugs, all that. Um, no hallucinogens. And then, every now and then, there'd be a preacher. This crazy guy in the street, screaming and shouting about Jesus Christ. Weren't brought up in a Christian family. Never really been cared about Jesus Christ. I didn't even know who Jesus really were. I, well, I knew the, the story, but I didn't know what I know about Jesus now, or who Jesus is now. And um, all my friends would be saying, like mocking, taking the mick. But I'd always wanted to speak to them or listen to them. I always wanted to, I was like, let's just wait behind and just listen to what this person's got to say. And we'd stand there and listen to what they were talking about, these preachers. They always had a crowd round them and my friends would be like, come on, let's go, let's go to River Island, or let's go to Burton's or something, or let's go to McDonald's. And uh, I'd always be like, no, let's stay. Let's stay and listen and see what they've got to say. And then we'd take Mick out of them a little bit and then carry on. And then forget about it. And I did, I just forgot about it. But then, as time went on, I'd see them again and keep seeing them and they'd keep giving me, well, they'd give me things like, because they hand out tracts and stuff. And I'd read them about this guy, Jesus Christ. And I was thinking, who is Jesus Christ? I started to develop this interest about Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, I had a view of who Jesus was anyway, because I was into the whole ascended masters, and that Jesus was a master who had ascended to teach us a way to God. A way, not the only way, but a way to God, amongst many other ways to get to God. Just like Buddha or like Gandhi or something, right? All these other ascended masters. So I thought I knew who Jesus was, but I'm reading these gospel tracts, these pieces of paper that these preachers had given me. And I'm learning about this Jesus and thinking, wow, this guy's really cool. I want to know more about this character. I want to know more about this Jesus. But I carried on meditating. Kept doing all this stuff. I started floating as well. I was meditating as well at, at times, I remember. And I used to float like I'd be sat there cross-legged on a home doing that, I'm in, meditating, and I feel myself floating off the floor, and then I'd think, what, I'm floating, and then the moment I thought that, I'd like slap back down, and so, but I don't think it was physical, I think that was when my spirit were leaving my body again, you see, I could feel it, now then, around that time, I was dating a woman, who was into white magic, she were into white magic. She were a white witch. She went through all this with me as well. She saw me coming to Christ. There'd be times um, further on when I'd be like, I've got to go. Jesus wants me to go. Because I started thinking that Jesus was speaking to me. And he were because he were pulling me out of the new age he started pulling me out of the new age after this time that i'll tell you now so what happened were this is when it all kicked off this is when it went mad this is when all the demons turned 
all the angels and the spirit guides turned into demons. They turned into demons and started attacking me after this time. Like I said, we'd be out. Preachers would be about. I remember one time there were a preacher and he looked dead at me and he was like, Jesus wants you. Jesus wants you to serve him. And it hit me like a ton of bricks in my heart. Like, oh, Jesus wants me. Oh, oh, it was crazy. It was like, wow. Going home in car with all my mates saying, look at what this track says. It says the world's ending. The world's ending. There's going to be wars, famines, rumours of wars, pestilence. Look at that. All that's happening now. It's happening now. My friends would be like, James, what? You're going crazy, mate. We're going out tonight. We're going to meet tons of birds and get loads of cork. You're ruining the vibe, yeah? Um, but yeah, so... These, these Christians giving me things, one of them gave me John's Gospel, one of the Gospels in the Bible about Jesus Christ, John's Gospel. I was right, reading it and I just started getting so obsessed with Jesus, thinking, wow, Jesus is fantastic. This guy is amazing. He died for us. He took away all of our sins on the cross so that we could be set free of all of our sin. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through him. Right? Which challenged all of my beliefs. All of my beliefs. And the belief that there we have a sinful nature and we're not good. We're not good. We're bad. We have problems. We have issues. Yet this new age junk were teaching me that we are we are love, we are eternal, we are good. So there was conflict there. And so now then around this time I had a dream, an out-of-body experience where I left my body one night. I came out, yeah, first, I was like, yeah, I've had so many experiences anyway, I've had so many experiences, to mention all of it is just difficult, this is almost an hour long, so, I went to sleep one night, tried to leave my body, came out of my body, went into my mum and dad's bedroom. My mum and dad were there asleep in bed. I was stood over their bed watching them. My mum and dad don't even know about this. They could watch this video now. They don't know all of the testimony, everything that's happened and how it all fits together. But I was stood there looking at them in bed and I sat on the edge of their bed and I was staring into a mirror, which is their wardrobe, which has got mirrors on the doors. And I went into the mirror. When I went into the mirror, I was running and I was being chased. I was being chased by some horrible negative demons. So I was being chased through these, this valley and I came to a place that was like a cul-de-sac all like i was trapped i'd come down here and it was all um cliffs high cliffs dark there were no way out apart from that way which were where i'd come from i'd come down like that and these things were chasing me and i was in like a horseshoe and i couldn't get out and it were dark and these things were dark, vile, horrible, shadow demons, all in different various forms and shapes. And I'd also been seeing shadow people as well. Shadow people, they say that's what they're called online. But they ain't shadow people. They're demons. 
stood in my bedroom. And um, so in this out-of-body experience, they were all walking towards me, these demons. All going to get me. And from nowhere, I just held up this crucifix, which were made out of light. A bright, white light. And I stepped forwards, and they all backed off. And then I, I walk up. I walk up as I stepped forwards in the dream and sat up, right? Like, wow. And I felt the, the weight lift. I felt everything lift. I felt peace. I felt calm. I felt good. I felt like, wow, Jesus is real. That's how I felt. I felt like Jesus is real, right? So after that, then I started digging all in on Jesus. More, more, more Jesus. Who's Jesus? Reading about Jesus. I had this John's Gospel. Reading about Jesus Christ. Learning more about him. And the more I did that, these angels turned into demons. These spirit guides that I was seeing in dreams, talking to when I was meditating, visiting. They were coming to visit me. They all turned into demons, basically, and they started raping me in my sleep. They were literally raping me. They were. My mum and dad don't know this either, but yeah, they were. I'd go. I'd I'd be stood in front of them in in um. Um. Like I'd come out of my body. And when I'd leave my body. I'd be face to face with one of them, just staring at me with eyes like snakes and teeth, sharp teeth. This, And I'd be like, why are you trying to rape me? And then they'd just laugh in my face and grin and laugh because there'd be nothing I could do about it. And um, for I started getting leaving my body and being chased by this one guy who wouldn't leave me alone, and I kept seeing him again and again and again in this dream. He'd come after me every night. The same guy would come after me every night, and he was scary. He was scary. He was scary. He was like some psycho murderer. I knew he wanted to kill me, and he was getting closer and closer to me as I dreamt more and more about him. He was coming for me, and he was, he was horrible. There was nothing I could do about it. Um, all my spirit, my indigo family, star family, um, these aliens that I'd been talking to in dreams, they all started to come after me as well. And uh, I started seeing stuff in my bedroom, in the physical. Things stood in corner while I'd be asleep. There'd be someone stood there staring at me and it was weird. I'd go to my girlfriend's and when I'd be walking home from her house, from Colm, I'd see demons stood in the street, like, and I weren't even on any drugs, but I'd see, like on the film Insidious, where they're like wax, like that, just some old granny would be stood there staring at me and she'd look like some, some off Insidious, just smile at me and like yellow teeth and like blue skin with purple eyelids and stuff trippy weird freaky wax shiny skin like anyway so yeah that happened so things were getting worse these demons were coming after me family started arguing Everybody were arguing in the house. I started talking more about Jesus Christ. People, they started, well, no, that were after, weren't it? Um, because what happened where I decided to go traveling, I thought, because I was still reading about New Age. I was still reading about it, you see. I was still practicing meditation, even though I was reading a, John's Gospel. I haven't got a Bible yet. And um, I decided I'm going to go on a pilgrimage. I'm going to go on a pilgrimage and walk 
from Spain to Istanbul along the coast with a backpack, live off sandwiches and cheese string and walk along the coast in Spain to Istanbul. And what happened was I got to Spain, didn't get to Istanbul, didn't leave Spain. I only stayed in Spain for a couple of months, went to hippie communes, still smoked a load of weed in them, hippie communes, still sinning, going to nudist beaches and all that lot. But I've got this John's Gospel with me and I'm reading this John's Gospel, still learning about this Jesus character, still thinking, wow, this guy's amazing. I want to know more and more about him. Um, before I set off, I prayed, Lord, you know, God, whoever you are, I don't know. Um, but I want to know who you are, whoever you are. Send me that book. If you're um, Allah, then send me the Quran. If you are the God of the Bible, send me the Bible. Whatever you are, send me that book. Oh, pardon me. So, I forgot about that prayer. And then when I came back, mum and dad are like, welcome home. We've swapped your rooms around. Our rooms around. We are now in your bedroom. And you are in our old bedroom with swapped rooms. So I went into my new bedroom, which was their old bedroom. And obviously, they'd had to take down everything from my, um, my other bedroom. All my paraphernalia, everything. My occult paraphernalia everything just everything it had been taken down and it were in a pile on the floor in my new bedroom but next to it was a bible so i'm looking at this bible and i'm looking at this pile and i knew that i had to make a decision i was like i just knew that I have to either get rid of all this paraphernalia. Well, I have to get rid of it and read that Bible. And so that's what I did. Or I could have kept all that stuff. But when I looked, I remembered the prayer. As soon as I saw it all, I remembered that I prayed that. And I was like, yeah. So I took all that stuff away, took it up into hills, burnt it, buried it, and then read my Bible. My room weren't even properly decorated properly because, or I hadn't at least given it any personality. It was just the way it were when my parents had left it. Um, started reading my Bible. And I stopped meditating. And that, 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 that is when all hell broke loose. Then. Because then, that's when they really came at me. Like, they'd been raping me. They'd been attacking me and everything. But when I went travelling, they kind of laid off. Because I'd kind of forgot about Jesus. And I was taking drugs at hippie communes. And that lot. They kind of backed off a bit because they saw that I was doing evil. But when I came back and found that Bible and actually got rid of all the junk from out of my room. When I buried it and burnt it and started reading that Bible, that is when all hell broke loose then. So, I'm reading the Bible. It's absolutely amazing. I'm opening up this Bible and then what happens is I went into New Testament. Romans speaking to me, jumping out at me. John's Gospel. All these Gospels, like, 
because if you don't know about the Bible, then you won't know what I'm talking about. But in the New Testament, basically I'm reading things that I haven't read before because I only have John's Gospel before I had this Bible. But you got Matthew, Luke, Mark, John. You got the letters. You got Paul's one and two, Thessalonians one and two. You've got Romans. You've got Galatians. You've got Revelations. You've got Hebrews. You got all these other things in the Word of God that I was reading, and they would. It was like looking at a book that was black and pitch black, and the words were highlighted and jumping out at me, but they weren't actually highlighted. And when they jumped out at me, they were hitting me in my heart. And cutting me like oh wow oh, like like yeah I'm not perfect yeah I am a sinner yeah I have done wrong yes there is a redeemer there is somebody who can set me free from sin wow Jesus paid the price for my sin I need to repent I need to stop the drugs I need to stop the drink I need to turn away from it I need to get rid of my friends I wanted to get rid of all my friends. I wanted to ditch them. I was willing to ditch my family. I was willing to turn my back on everything just to serve Jesus Christ. It was amazing. It's amazing. So, he is amazing. Not it. He is amazing. So, for the first time ever, I'm reading that. This is jumping out at me and speaking to me. He was speaking to me. I started, that's how he speaks. So I was hearing his voice. Oh, it were absolutely amazing. It were absolutely fantastic. What else happened? Yeah, I started to love people. I started to actually care about people. I'd see homeless people in the street and just want to give them money and cared about them like i actually genuinely cared about them from the heart and i'd go home and cry i'd cry and i'd look on telly and i'd see all these ethiopian adverts and what have you poverty stuff animal cruelty stuff i started god started to show me that this world is evil. That actually, yes, he made everything. And he made this world. But Adam and Eve sinned. And that we have a sinful nature. And that's why the world's a bad place. And there is a true devil. Who's using our sinful nature, our self-destructiveness against ourselves. To corrupt. He wants to just destroy us. Because God loves us. So... I was seeing how bad this world were and that it's full of war, it's full of oh, evil. And I was crying. I was crying. My eyes out, man. I was seeing that all that heavy metal that I'd been listening to is all evil. It's violent. It's angry. I was crying. I was crying about how I'd treat women and how I just wanted to have sex with them. How I'd polluted my body by taking all those drugs. I smoked for like eight years. Maybe longer. God just helped me to quit like that. He just took it away from me. Now I've been tempted since, yeah. But I'm not an addict. I don't, I'm not addicted to anything anymore. He completely just changed me completely. My entire outlook changed. My, my outlook on life just changed. I realised that there's heaven. There's a heaven. We can go to heaven. We can have an eternity in heaven. We can live in heaven forever. And we must accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. That he paid the price for our sin. So that we could be set free. We must accept him. That yes, 
For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that all those who believe in him shall receive eternal life. And that's it. You need to believe in him and then resist sin. And God will change you. He sent the Holy Ghost into me to transform my heart, to make me new from the inside out. <clears throat> All I wanted to do was read my Bible, which sounds boring to you. But actually, when you have the Holy Ghost, it's the best thing. It's the only thing that you want to do. You want to cleanse out your body and stop sinning so that God can live inside of you and you can be a clean, holy temple. And all of my beliefs about all this junk that I've just told you about, he started changing it. And these demons, these angels, showed me that they were demons. They became my enemies. They were my friends when I was following their lies, when I was listening to them. But when I started listening to God and not doing what they wanted me to do, not meditating anymore, not believing all of that whole thing, the new age, there was nothing that they could do. And the only thing that they could do was to turn against me and try and kill me and stop me from coming to Christ. So that's what they tried to do. So now, the demons inside of people, because people have demons inside of them, everybody does, they started coming against me. The people didn't know that they were being used by Satan, but they were. So my friends and my family started saying that I was crazy. All you want to talk about is Jesus all the time. That's all you ever want to talk about is Jesus. Jesus this, Jesus that. And that is all that I wanted to talk about. I'd go out. I'd still go out. I mean, my friends were saying to me, come out. And I'd be saying, no, no, I'm not coming out. Goodbye. Um, Jesus don't want me to come out. Jesus wants me to stay in. Jesus wants me to read my Bible. And I'd sit in my bedroom just reading my Bible out loud from my mouth, loudly. My mum and dad were going insane. They were downstairs going mental, wanting me to shut up. Because every single demon that lives inside of their flesh was being tormented by the word of God. For all scripture is God breathed, useful for teaching, rebuking and encouraging in righteousness. And the sword of the spirit is sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts through bone and marrow, sword and spirit. It judges the attitudes and thoughts of the mind. The weapons that we war with, they are not carnal, but spiritual for the demolishing of strongholds and tearing down of the powers and principalities and rulers in high places. That is what I was doing when I was speaking the word of God, speaking the true and living words of the true almighty and only ruler God. In the spirit realm, there was a war raging. And as I spoke those words of truth, they was extinguishing the darkness that surrounded me. So everybody around me started to turn against me. Just like Jesus said, the world hates you. Keep in mind that it hated me also. They would love you as their own if you belong to the world. But as it is, you do, not, you do not belong to the world. That is why the world hates you. If they listen to me, they will listen to you. If they listen to you, they listen to me. So, I'd switch sides. I'd switched sides. My mum took me to doctors. Doctor, doctor. My son's seen demons, won't stop talking about Jesus Christ. What's going on? Maybe he's schizophrenic. Because... 
there has been schizophrenia in my family. But the doctor turned out to be a Presbyterian. Glory to God. The, the doctor's like, James, do you think that you are Jesus? I'm like, no, there is only one Jesus Christ and it's not me. And so there were nothing that, that he could do. Because everybody's entitled to their own beliefs. So now what? Friends are inviting me out. Sometimes I'm going out. Maybe go to an house party or something. But when I were out, I knew I shouldn't be there. I'd be sat there. Everybody's doing what they're doing. And I just knew that this weren't my crowd anymore. I knew that these weren't my people anymore. I knew that my heart had been changed. I'd been changed. I didn't approve of what they were doing. And I wanted them to find God. And furthermore, I wanted to find God more. I wanted to keep pursuing God. Learning more about God. Reading my Bible. In fact, I used to take my Bible out. When I'd be going around Colm, um, in pubs and clubs or whatever, I'd have my Bible on me and I'd be trying to show people my Bible while we're out partying. You know, that's crazy because people ain't going to want to listen. And um, <clears throat> that's how on fire I were for God. That's what he was doing as he was saving me. From all that then everything just started falling off the drugs started falling off the drinking started falling off the fags the swearing blasphemy lying and then the inward things anger hatred worry all of it just started falling away reading my bible more and more joining a church joined a church met with some brothers and sisters in christ it was wonderful got a couple of deliverances done online some demons cast out of me which was also wonderful brilliant experience so yeah there's been a lot more things many more experiences i've seen throughout that entire thing that i've just said i've witnessed demons many demons um and jesus doing even more more things but there's so much stuff for me to remember there's so much for me to so much things it's just hard to say every single thing that's happened and also now as a christian because there came a time when i declared myself as a christian people would be saying to me you're a christian you're a christian i'd be saying i'm not a christian Psh, i'm not a christian and then at one point i just had to say yeah I am a Christian, and then from then on, that were it. That were it then. And eventually, I ended up stopping meditating. The attacks from the demons wore off, um, and God pulled through more than they. So it didn't end completely. There was a moment of torment and torture when demons were throwing me around. They were levitating me off my bed as well. They were raping me, like I said. Sleep paralysis, which is actually just demons. So I'd wake up with demons choking me and they were sat on my chest and they were trying to kill me. So there was all that. They were trying to attack me at night and in the day. They were trying to scare me because I'd see them. They were trying to freak me out. Um, but I kept reading that Bible, I kept praying, and I kept stopping sinning, and eventually, 
oh yeah and then there was also demons trying to come against me through people pushing against what i was te what i was talking about about jesus but i wouldn't shut up and i wouldn't give up they kept pushing against me and then over time as i continue to walk and walk as a christian and not return to my old ways although sometimes i do stumble we all do those attacks the demons lose their grip they lose their stronghold they can't keep hold of you anymore because you're not living in that sin you're not living there so they can't they don't have any legal ground to be able to to attack you they're, they're not allowed if you don't do anything that allows them so now they come and tempt me to but i hear them because god allows me to hear them because i can take captive every thought in my mind now because i have the holy ghost who lives in me god's spirit which he sent me the moment that i believe in jesus christ i receive that holy ghost spirit which is the very spirit that tells me what not to do or what to do so when i have a fag the holy ghost would be like making me feel guilty or if someone tempts me to have a fag the holy ghost would be like don't do it and i'd feel it inside of me the holy ghost helps me to hate it hate the sin to not want to sin Whereas before, I enjoyed living in sin. I didn't know any difference. I didn't see the contrast. There was no difference. I couldn't see my thoughts properly in my mind. I didn't have love for other human beings. I didn't want everybody to learn about Jesus Christ and love him so they can receive everlasting life when they die and not go to hell, which is a real place. The Holy Ghost does these things so that we can have a relationship with the Father as well. If, if we can hear the Holy Ghost, then we're speaking to the Father. We do what he tells us to do now. Because we belong to Jesus Christ, we can't belong to ourselves. Because when I belonged to myself before, I was self-destructive. I ruined everything. And Jesus came and rescued me, thank God. That he came and rescued me because, well, I, I've seen testimonies which are cr crazier than mine. And people have said, oh, I'd probably be dead by now. And I believe it. But I probably would be dead by now as well. Even though I haven't been rescued out of prison or anything like that. And I'm not an ex-mafia boss or something who's come to Christ and been saved. But I could probably be dead by now. Because I took many, many drugs. I took large amounts of drugs. I was playing with demons. And at any time, God could have let them kill me. He really could have. When I used to wake up and have demons sat on me trying to choke me. I used to cry out in my mind, Jesus, in my head. And he'd pull through and they'd leave. And there was nothing that they could do. He didn't have to do that, did he? So they could have killed me. They could have had me. But by his grace and his mercy, he had mercy. Though... We're all sinners. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all done wrong. Not one is just. Not one is good. No, not one. We have all turned away. We've all gone our own way. But praise be to Jesus Christ. 
Praise be to God through Jesus Christ. That there is a way. So whatever you're going through. I'm ending this video now. It's over. But whatever you're going through. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. He will answer you. If you call out to him. Now I know people who say they've called out to him. And they don't answer. But. Jesus said, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door will be opened. He said, ask and ye shall receive, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door will be opened unto you. For anybody who asks, receives, the one who seeks, finds, the one who knocks, the door will be opened. So Jesus doesn't want you to just say one prayer. Yes, Lord, I need your help. And you're doing it all from up here. He wants you to mean it. You need to mean it. You need to be ready to turn away. You want to know God so much that you're willing to give up your very life to be with him. Jesus said, whoever does not pick up his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. We must die daily daily pick up your cross when he says don't have that that ecstasy don't have it pick up your cross die a little bit each day even with doubt when doubt comes don't listen to doubt have faith believe die to doubt die to it with him on the cross die with him spiritually Go to the grave with him so you can rise with him to eternal life. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And we will come to you and make our home with you. I will not leave you as orphans, but I will come to you. He said, I will give you another counsellor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world does not know him and cannot see him, but you know him, for he will be with you and in you. That's what you want. You want the Holy Ghost, but you must believe. You must believe that he took away all your sins on the cross for you and that you did nothing to earn it. It's a free gift of grace. God's mercy to us because he loved us. Because he cares for us. Not because of anything we have done. But because of his mercy. Because he is a loving God. Because he is merciful. Because he is good. Because he is holy and pure. And righteous. So that's my testimony about Jesus Christ and that I was into the New Age and I did all that stuff and much more that I can't quite remember right now. But it doesn't matter what you've done, you can be set free from sin. It doesn't matter how much of an addict you are it doesn't matter because you can be saved and something else as well Jesus said with in reference to the Holy Ghost in reference to the Holy Ghost with you us receiving the Holy Spirit, which we need to transform us into a new person from the in, from the core, at the heart. He said, if a, if a child asks for a fish, will the father give him a snake? Or if a son asks for bread, 
Will the father give him a stone? So with you. Asking ye shall receive, seeking ye shall find. If you ask for the Holy Ghost, he'll give you it. If you, whatever you ask for in prayer, it shall be given to you. It shall be given to you. And if you actually want to know who God is from the heart, you can't test God. Scripture says nobody can test him. No one can test God. Because God reads our mind. God judges the thoughts, the attitude of the mind and the heart. He knows. He knows everything. It says he knows every hair on your head. So don't think that you can trick God or deceive him. You can't trick him or deceive him. You have to actually mean it from the heart. You have to really, really mean it. And I meant it from the heart because I were being thrown about by demons. I needed rescuing. And if you're at your wit's ends, maybe things are going to have to get a whole lot worse before they'll get a whole lot better. But it would be just a lot better for you to just kneel right now while you can and ask for help, truly, and mean it. And if nothing happens, don't be surprised. Faith does not come through sight. We are not supposed to have faith through sight. We are supposed to believe when we don't see. That's what faith is. Faith. Not through visions, seeing angels, no. You keep asking, you keep praying, you don't give up, you keep chasing him, keep knocking on that door, bang on that door, scratch on that door until your nails fall off. Find a Bible, get the New Testament, read it, learn about Jesus. You want to know who God is? Find out about him. Chase him. He's just said, come near to me and I will come near to you. Humble yourselves and I will lift you up. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted, Jesus Christ said. Jesus said to the Father, Father, I do not pray for myself, for, for them only, but those who will hear so he said about the disciples, I do not pray about them only, the disciples, but I pray for those who will hear the message through them. That there may be one Father as we are one. I in you and you in me, and may they together be in us. So that they can be brought to complete unity, Father. So that we can love each other. And what does scripture say? When Jesus said, the first and greatest commandment is this. Love the Lord your God with all your strength, soul and mind. And your spirit. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. For this sums up the law and the prophets. All the law hangs on this. These commands. These two commands. So you must love God with all your strength, with all your mind, with all your spirit, with all your soul. And this is also as you push closer to God, you've got to really be committed. You can't just say, the Lord's Prayer. You can't just find the Lord's Prayer in the Bible Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, all that, and think that that's going to work. It's not, because God sees the heart. Do you mean it from your heart? You have to mean it. You have to mean it. And also, it's not just about escaping from hell. It's about a relationship with God. Knowing that God actually loves you and wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to be friends with you. 
he wants you to hear his voice he wants to talk to you so he can guide you in life so you don't go your own way and keep sinning and destroying yourself because every time you try and make it right you screw up again because you don't actually know the right way you think you know the right way but you don't know the right way jesus said i am the way the truth and the life and no man comes to the father except through me he said my sheep know my voice and they will never listen to a stranger he said the wolf comes to steal kill and destroy that's why he said the sheep they hear my voice but they will never listen to a stranger. He said, I am the good shepherd. I am the gateway for the sheep. The good shepherd. And the path, he said, there is a broad path. A great, broad, wide path. And a wide gate to damnation and many are on it but there is a narrow path a narrow path and a small gate to eternal life and only a few find it and that narrow path is him he is the narrow path he himself is the narrow path gate that leads to eternal life and you must go through him the narrow gate to get to the father you have to go through him you have to go through his death eternal life and resurrection to the father he is the way he is the only way you must believe that he died on the cross for you and took away all of your sin on that cross. He took away your sin. He took your sin to the grave. So that your sin would die in the grave. It would die there. So that you could be set free from sin. So you don't need to sin any longer. You must believe this. To receive eternal life. For he said a time is coming when many will go here and there in search for wisdom. They will gather around them like I said a large number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They'll turn aside from the truth. And turn to doctrines of men. But the one who leans on me shall receive eternal life. The one who stands firm to the end will receive eternal life. He said, never will I leave him. Never will I forsake him. He said, no one who comes to me, I will never drive them away. Anyone who comes to me, I will never drive them away. That is what Jesus said. So if you come to him, he won't drive you away. And he said, no man can come to me unless the Father draws them. So if you're actually thinking about Jesus Christ and you want to know about him, you're being drawn already by the Father. You're being called already. So you might as well start to run and just quicken the whole process because we don't have much time. Anyway. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching this video. And I really do pray that you'll come to Jesus Christ. It's good. It's not bad. He's good. He's not bad. Get rid of all your foolish ideas of what you think it is to know about Jesus and read a Bible instead. The New Testament. Because being a Christian is not boring at all when you have eternal life. And you can safely say that you are going to go to heaven for an entire eternity and live there and love it. 
and be there forever with complete love, peace, happiness, joy, just love forever. Instead of wondering, because scripture says that no sinners, people who, who don't serve the Lord and believe that Jesus took away their sin and they don't have a relationship with him, then no, 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 they're not going to heaven. You're not going to heaven. Don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. So I'm trying to help you. So thank you for listening to my testimony. I had to rant because I don't want anyone going to hell. And thank you for listening to my testimony and God bless you. And I really do pray that you will know Christ and find Christ and experience the true joy and love and happiness and faith and boldness and courage that comes through knowing the true and living God. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Amen.